Uh, this is actually a new piece uh, tentatively written for Mr. Algren. Why do we race for the scrap heaps for all forgotten things? Is it to watch the plumes of smoke bellowing from, the from a future which is not a future, but wasted hours waiting for men and women to finally stand, but who <clears throat> never stood for anything at all? Do you understand? And what are the solutions when the young become as brutal as New York City landlords, turning our buildings into shooting galleries for out-of-towners who walk pretty in their cockroach-sure skin with its perfect low? And whose gravity broadens the shoulders of those who live with bent backs from the labor of becoming exhibits for those who will never stay, but will always be just visiting. As one mayor put it, New York is open for business. The brutality, Mr. Algren, is that only the truly wealthy can own a judge, and getting off on a misdemeanor is afforded only to those who pay the price of admission of staying out of the tombs. It is the unspoken law born of the advertisement rooms that convinces the broker and the bartender that is the that it that this is the natural order of things. Are we the new Indians to be buried under the ruins that were our rooms, or the bedroom that sat at the end of the hall? Oh, New York, with your buildings as clean as ancient Rome, would you have the waters of the Hudson River wash us away into the oceans and our breath? bleached of your air, and what are air rights other than a rich man's attempt to claim the horizon as his own? Are we to wash up on the shores of Plum Island with all the newspapers, used syringes, and the Coney Island, Coney Island whitefish? Even the taxi driver who passes through the nights on streets that are nowhere avenues to him will never call the great pinball machine of Times Square home. His place is across George, the George Washington Bridge where he disappears into the view across the Hudson. Someone saw to that long ago in some backroom deal. You can't love a city unless you love its ghosts who will always haunt the SRO of the heart. They are, they, oh they are all here the subway suicide diver whose last act of dis desperation delayed the one train for six hours, the squeegee man who will forever clean passing windshields at new intersections with old and soiled water, the shut-in who lost her mind only to be locked up in St. Luke's, the street artist who found his lot among other street artists artists in Washington Square Park before freezing to death in the jaws of winter, or all the iron workers whose words will never make it into the history, or into history, as dirty-faced testimonies of those bur uh, buried under the concrete of a, of a story whitewashed. Richard, who found, uh, who fa uh, wound up on the street after being evicted from the apartment he was born in for being a hoarder only to be let back in a few months later then dying in the hospital two weeks later. There's the cop who was shot in the head up in the Bronx and the punk who is still looking for a place to play now that CBGB is gone. I've seen your ghosts vanish in the exhaust from pax, uh, passing taxi cabs only to be shit out behind all metal doors. A question to the city from a letter. Are you a real are you really a dying arcade? Thank you.